as most of you know, oh yeah, it's all right, quickly. As most of you maybe know from this podcast, I think I've updated it beforehand, that Brendan Babsian, the founder of Noah and the former design director of Supreme or creative director, I forgot what it was, his actual title, but he did some really amazing stuff at Supreme. And then obviously at the same time, he also had Noah. I think it was called another name. I forgot what it was. What's called another name before it? I think it was called something else. I forgot the name of it. Then he was at Supreme. Then he kind of paused the brand similar to what, you know, Jason Dill did with fucking awesome. He sort of paused the brand and kind of restarted it later on when he sort of left Supreme. And now he's got a new job heading up J Crew. And he's basically been tasked with trying to resuscitate J Crew because it's been essentially, you know, on the, on the sidelines for a very very long time on life support struggling for air struggling for any sort of relevancy and you know getting Brenda Babson involved I think was a really bit of a master show, especially considering J. Crew's aesthetic and considering what kind of you know Brendan's about when it comes to design and his codes and stuff I thought it'd be a really great marriage and something that would actually make some sense but having seen the stuff I'm not really too sure if it's all that great maybe it's because of the style maybe because of the editorial itself but it looks a little bit mediocre and I don't know if this is because in general I've been a little bit underwhelmed with what Brendan's done with Noah in recent years it feels like it's kind of gone by the wayside I'm not really too sure why maybe because they've expanded their offerings they're doing a lot more pieces now so maybe more of his creative juices are being spread across many different things so you're not getting as many hits as you were in the beginning when they were only doing really small collections maybe it's because my eyes are now used to the Noah aesthetic that's now been copied by many different brands so I'm kind of not it's not special as it once was prior maybe because my taste levels have just evolved maybe because I'm just being over critical I don't know or maybe because I'm blind there's something about Noah just doesn't hit the same as it does before in the past and having looked at this new um pieces coming from J Crew under Brendan Babson's um tutelage it doesn't look like there's much there that's really really kind of gonna make me run to the stores to kind of grab some stuff there's some okay pieces here and there but nothing crazy that's really gonna make me go goo goo gaga so the first picture we've got a sort of salmon pink uh mohair type sweater over a pinstripe um of a striped yellow and blue shirt with some acid wash jeans and some nice penny loafers so a typical what you'd say kind of um Noah look in that respect right taking something classic and then applying a little twist in it a little bit of a funk to kind of you know swag it up a little bit so typical Noah in that respect then you've got this um look here number two which is essentially a version of a chore jacket maybe you'd say with like a paisley print shirt some nice pants and again some decent loafers with a strap on them so again nothing that i'm really too enamored with look free you've got a what's what do you call that uh wrangling sleeve jumper with a sort of met with sort of pattern on there over some flannel shirt with another sort of pinky salmon type pant here like a chino with another sort of buckle ugly shoe thing going on there You've got some more prints there, the print there with the jacket. The, the interesting thing here is the return of the New Balances because I'm not sure if you guys remember, but back in the day, J. Crew used to do some really interesting New Balances collaborations. I don't know why, but for whatever reason, every season they'd have really decent J. Crew collaboration New Balances, um, which was really strange to see. So did J. Crew New Balance, right? There were weird ones over the years that just didn't make any sense. Like they just kind of popped up out of the blue. Like every season there'd be a, a specific sort of J Crew only New Balance that kind of appeared out of the blue, out of the blue, out of the blue, out of the blue, and they came to see keep them consistent. And they used to also used to be J Crew Nikes, like classic. Like they'd always used to take like really classic silhouettes, like LDVs and stuff like that, if I remember correctly. Yeah, see, like yeah, like all courts. Um, no, sorry, all courts like kill shots. Um, whatever ones they did, yes, they did. See, they did. Um, they did. Uh, what was the one? That's I forgot what that one's called. There, they got Cortez. See, they got different sort of um, ones they did in the past, which are really, really cool. So it's cool to see that kind of coming back again because I think that's a really cool introduction and hopefully will give a different sort of flavor to what we have in terms of new bands offerings, especially from the likes of like Amelie on door. But the look itself, I'm not really for that striped long sleeve, whatever, and those shorts. I just don't like anything about it. And that picture as well, it looks kind of muddy, isn't it? I'm not really a fan of it at all in that respect. We continue on. This red... Um, this red kind of what do, you, what do you call it this red work jacket is sublime maybe the favorite piece i think i've heard of it it looks like it's made out of some sort of felt um that's really nice to be honest um with the shirt with the striped shirt tucked into a pair of jeans and uh and the shoes there salvage denim this looks really nice this is a really nice look i gotta be honest 
this is really especially with a little golden retriever with a little jumper around it that's a really nice look with that red jacket um then you've got another look here with like a waistcoat and some jeans and some so the whole thing there's loads of sockless looks on the end which i'm not really a fan of this parker is fucking banging but again i'm always a sucker for a good parker with some good chest pockets here on the front do you know what i mean i'm always going to be a down for that um they got some good um what do you call them mountain boot type things with the red laces and a brown suede typical sort of mountain look kind of you know makeup there um the knit jumper i'm not really too fond of as well that doesn't really do much for me um got some big baggy jeans here look with again with the sockless like it's a very specific look they're trying to go through with j crew right very americana um yeah i'm not this flannel jacket thing looks decent i guess for the most part but again you could get that jacket from uh, many many different brands out there on the market there is it really that much of an offering to really make you rush to the stores to go cop it i'm not really too sure there's a contrast panel type shirt thing going on that's probably quite interesting a lot of people will probably be into especially some of the streetwear lot it's got you know one sleeve looks like one pattern one sleeve is one pattern pocket the different i mean that's all well good there You've got a nice the suit looks fairly decent this is probably my favorite favorite look overall this suit look is really nice you've got this kind of what material is i don't know what it is it looks like a suede on something or maybe corduroy i don't know what that is there but it's like in a dark olive green color like a bottle green with like these really great loafers which are in suede too the socks can go the striped socks i don't really like that with that look and a nice like pinkish shirt with a weird paisley tie i think those colors work really well together i just don't like the socks um up oh, good up again do, 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 do. 13 of that in it right uh the socks there next one we've got a typical j crew look which is fairly decent again with the uh body warmer type thing going on there with a over, over, over a green jumper with a c logo on it and some what are they corduroy work pants or something along those lines of and some classic like court sneakers yeah man a lot of this stuff doesn't really hit for me man personally some of the suit jackets and stuff are nice this kind of uh gray blazer type thing going on there's pretty nice with those slacks those look quite nice and what she's wearing looks okay i guess but styling and the editorial itself just doesn't hit home for me in that regard this isn't doesn't this isn't the offering or the introduction i thought jk would have it looks fairly fairly boring i'm not gonna lie I don't know again, is it Brenda? Has he Brenda lost a sauce in the same way that Ricardo Tisci lost a sauce at Burberry? You see what Ricardo Tisci is doing at Burberry now, you're like, Jesus Christ, this surely can't be the same designer that set trends and, you know, whatever it may be when he was at Givenchy, man. Like, this can't be the same dude, can it? And maybe this just happens over time, innit? You, you, you know what I mean? So much of your juice gets given to your own brand over season of season, you have to make hit after hit, and you just miss a couple of times. Whatever these shoes are, these are really nice. I like these. These look really, really nice. I forgot what they call a particular style, but these are very nice. I like that. It's like a brown suede with this sort of um, leather sort of uh, contrast around there, the seam. I really like that. I really, really do like that. And the jeans seem to fit a type, certain type of way as well, especially with the length. Maybe because this girl's got really great legs, but the jeans fit her fucking perfectly with no alterations. That's fucking cool to see. But it just doesn't hit as much as I thought it would, man. There's a lot of hype around this kind of um, reintroduction. The hats look fairly good. I'd wear the fuck out of the hats. Okay, that's pretty clever. Each hat's got a letter of the, the brand, so J. Crew. So if you wanted to, you could buy each one, which would probably be a good thing to have in your collection. J. Crew. Um, the hats are probably the favorite thing, and that kind of olive, that kind of, and maybe this look actually going back on it. This look is probably one of the standout ones as well, with the cream, with the acid wash and stuff. That's a look you could easily copy in your wardrobe and make work again. But the rest of it is really underwhelming. I have to say, man, really, really, really underwhelming. I'm not really a fan of it at all. Introduction of the New Balance is nice. Obviously, that red jacket here that I liked is good. Look number six. But again, that red work jacket, you can get that anywhere. This green Parker thing that I like is, again, something you could easily pick up in Uniqlo. It's not something that crazy to go, you know, to go be paying J. Crew money to go and purchase. The hats are pretty decent. And then this kind of olive green suit number thing is quite nice, but I would actually change up some details. But apart from that, fairly underwhelming from Brendan Babbage's debut at J. Crew. Um, the first offering of the Brendan Babbage and Signature J. Crew collection will be available online with more stars arriving from August the 16th. So if you want it, check it out, I guess, isn't it? If you want it, check it out, I guess.